We had a great time at Knox Tavern the other night. Um, Where were the others? Where were the other candidates? They say that they're locals. I didn't see them there. Going to get home safe. I think it's it's really tricky, especially with cost of living. We can't really expect everyone to afford Uber's home. Well, I guess as well. Can they even afford a home when they get the Uber home? Homelessness centres are closing down. Look at the Liberal Party and Labor Party, what they say are their values versus what actually happens. You look at the charts of how much house prices have increased over the past few years. It's just insane how much it goes up. Fundamentally, if we treat homes as investments, then they'll behave as investments. People will refuse to settle at a loss. They'll keep buying more houses than they actually need. And that has the effect of just driving house price ownership higher and higher. You see in Silicon Valley, for instance, all this money that's being created how much of that was thanks to real estate. Most of the money that comes out of Silicon Valley is from investing in companies, in ideas. Australia has long been a nation that has valued innovation. David Uniapon on the $50 note, he invented the mechanised shears. Innovation is something that Australia values and it's something that still exists in Australia. We don't need to just invest in houses exploiting each other. We have many amazing inventions and innovations from Australia that we should be proud of and we take for granted penicillin. Oh, even preferential voting. That was that got started in Australia amongst other places. CSIRO invented Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi wasn't really commercialized by the CSIRO. They only made money out of it by having to sue the people who didn't pay them royalties originally. Mm -hmm. Ever since the dot-com boom, Australian innovations are happening overseas. Mm -hmm. Australian universities are having enough people graduate, but then many Australians, including myself, have to go overseas where we can more fully explore our career potential. If all these people are studying in Australia, we have the skills, why aren't we making better use of it? Mm -hmm. Our online life now is dictated to us by American tech giants. Your freedom of speech is decided in California. It's not decided in Canberra. Mm. If the public commons is being decided by Elon Musk and others in America, Mm. Australia is becoming a vassal state of the United States. We have promises like more jobs. Is that the optimal objective? Because for instance, if we lowered the minimum wage, that could generate more jobs, exploiting each other. I don't think we should be focusing on short-term economic gains. You see how quickly the robot moves between, you know, welding the doors on the car, that sort of thing. If we lowered the minimum wage, then spending the money creating robotics would be less financially appealing and we would create more jobs because we would have, you know, the welder, person um, smashing the metal into the flat shape, that sort of thing. I I don't think we really want the promise of employment so much because we do have the concept of wage slaves and I don't think that's what people are looking for. What satisfaction do jobs provide? They provide the ability to contribute back to a community. No one wants to be caught in a hamster race to pay their bills, to pay for unaffordable rentals. The focus of the Fusion Party isn't so much on growing the economy by changing this tax rate or whatever, is making better use of the skills of Australians. We want economic prosperity in Australia. We want to support more Australian development and inventions. If Australia's economy stays dependent on digging these materials out of the ground, Mm. then we're at risk. As soon as there's any sort of technological shift or societal shift, Mm. then what is Australia supposed to do? We have Owen Miller. Hi, I'm the candidate for Aston. You'll have the chance to vote for us on the 1st of April. Authorised by A. Leong, Fusion, Brunswick.